Hi, everyone. I'm Dean Boss. I'm Sustainable Ag uh, Educator from Michigan State University Extension and longtime member of the Midwest Cover Crop Council. And I'm here with uh, Anna Marl. Anna, you want to tell them about yourself? Yeah, I'm the program manager for Midwest Cover Crops Council for about the last three years. Um, and I work out of Purdue University. Okay, so we're here today to bring you some information that we think is kind of exciting about our Midwest Cover Crop Council um, Cover Crop Decision Tool. We have updated the tool and uh, want to pass along information um, about what we've accomplished with that project. We're starting out here with the old tool. Those of you who have worked uh, with the old tool or if you happen to be here for the first time, you can take a quick look at this and, and uh, promptly forget it because you won't Going to need to remember this, but those of you who have worked with our tools in the past, um, this tool was created back in uh, 2011, and so it's been around for approximately 10 years. Um, the original concept was that when farmers had to make decisions about cover crops, um, it was really hard to put all the information together to make decisions. Um, there, there was a lot of good information out there, things like managing cover crops profitably, um, which was the Bible of cover crops, which a lot of the information in this tool was um, designed around that. Uh, most of the uh, extension um, services had uh, bulletins on cover crops, NRCS had information on cover crops, seed dealers had cover crop information, but it was dispersed all around uh, resided in different systems. Some of it was print form, some of it was uh, on the computer. And we felt um, to help farmers make a better decision that, that we needed to pull that information together and consolidate it into a tool. That's when we came up with this tool. We got some original funding to create this tool and put it on the web. And uh, it has done well through the years. A lot of people have accessed it. Um, used it as they've sorted through cover crop options in their areas, but we felt it was time uh, to just kind of do an overall refresh. Um, time to upgrade it. Uh, web technology has changed a lot. There's a lot more things that you can do on a web page that we uh, couldn't do originally. Um, there was a few enhancements that we thought would would make the the tool more functional. Um, this current tool that you're looking at here was not mobile friendly. Um, if you ever tried to do this one on your cell phone, um, it could drive you somewhat batty. Uh, so we wanted the new tool to be mobile friendly. And this tool was not ADA compatible. Um, so we made that a goal for the refresh as well, um, uh, ADA compatibility. So this is where we're coming from. Um, and uh, we now would like to take you to the new version of the tool and show you some of the features and, and how you can use that tool. So I'm going to hand it back to Anna to, to kick that process off. Yeah. Um, so the first step in revising the tool was to update the information within the tool. Um, so what we did was we gathered cover crop experts from each state or province um, to go through and update that information. Um, there's a lot of information about cover crops out there, but um, we're getting some new species, um, some, you know, traditional cash crops that we're now using as um, cover crops. Um, and sometimes we find that it's difficult to find um, real data on some of these crops. Um, and so when we can't rely on real data, we uh, ask for expert experience and opinion. And so we gather uh, cover crop experts from each state including NRCS, Soil and Water Conservation Districts, Extension Educators and Specialists, um, Industry and um, Farmers are also involved in the process, um, and then anyone else that might be applicable, you know, other statewide partners um, that are stakeholders in cover crop adoption. Um, and we update the cover crop list of species uh, so that we make sure that we've got all the most popular and useful cover crops in that state. And then we go through and we hold uh, meetings to revise all the information, uh, which you'll see in a moment. Um, everything from seeding time periods, uh, seeding rates, um, potential advantages, a whole slew of information. 
Um, so with that, I'll go ahead and get started uh, with a short demo. Um, so I'm located in Indiana. And we'll just start with a, a very uh, northern county. Uh, so Steuben is the far northeast. Um, and then that's all you need for uh, your first round with the decision tool is that um, just your state and county. And when you enter that, this tool will pull climate data from the background of the tool, um, all based on frost dates, 30 years of NOAA data, um, and come up with your seeding time frames based on that um, information. So when you click find your cover crops, you'll see here for Steuben County in the north, um, just for example, winter barley's reliable establishment seeding period ends October 23rd. Um, just to give you a, a quick idea of how that can change across the state, um, if we switch to Posey County, which is the far southwest, um, and click updated results, you'll see winter barley uh, shifts later till November 11th. Um, so it really is interactive based on your location. Um, that's why, you know, we don't give you any information back until we've got your location um, so that we have appropriate seeding periods for you. Um, something else you can do is to display the cover crop type. You'll see we've got grasses, broadleaves, legumes, um, even some mixtures in a few states. Um, and then if you're interested in a specific type of cover crop, you can check the box to list the cover crops by type. Um, so in the previous version of the tool, they were all outlined by cover crop type. Um, and in this version, you can choose whether or not they are grouped together. Um, so you'll see all the grasses are there at the top and then legumes, brassicas. So tell them about the um, green versus the yellow bars. What, what's the uh, difference in the bar color? Sure. Um, so green uh, is for reliable establishment. So uh, if you see that cover crop species within that time frame, we're really confident that you'll have good establishment. Um, the yellow bars just signal a caution um, in terms of either moisture or uh, temperature restrictions. Um, so th it could be possible that you can seed in that time frame and be successful, but uh, we just want to put a, a caution out there that it's, um, it's getting a little, uh, a little risky to plant in that time frame. Okay. And um, while we're on the topic of uh, different seeding risks and seeding types, um, I'll just point out here that we've got a uh, frost seeding icon for a few cover crops. In the previous version of the tool, we had that red bar that took up a lot of space in the calendar grid. Um, so this just cleans up the, the grid a little bit and, and you can still see which uh, species are suitable for frost seeding. We also have a, a little orange diamond here to note the fly-free date, um, like for wheat. Um, so if that's something that you're con concerned about, um, it's noted on the calendar. And um, if not, you can see there's, there's plenty of um, available time to seed winter wheat. Okay, so it looks like I still have a whole lot of choices here. <laughs> Uh, how, how, how can I take this down further? To, um, All right. Um, so we can go up here and revise our results. Um, so the first thing that we want to think about when we're doing cover crops is what is your goal? Um, so you have the option of putting in three different goals. Um, we'll just start with one here. Um, Erosion fighter is a really popular goal, and you can see there's a button here at the bottom to see updated results. And you'll see that the tool automatically groups our cover crops um, by its goal rating. So the fours that rate excellent for erosion fighting come to the top, followed by, you know, three, two, one, um, clear to the species that, that aren't as suitable for erosion fighting. Um, while you're looking at this seeding grid, um, we, we have a button up here at the top that says revise your requirements. So you can click on that and add an additional goal. Um, let's 
say lasting residue and then maybe nitrogen scavenging. Just so you can see what it's like to have three goals listed, um, the ones at the top are going to rank highest for all three goals, um, followed by the ones that are, you know, rated highest for your first goal and then um, coming down for your additional goals. And we've got this new pop-out box so that you can, you can read what all goals uh, you've selected and, and how those cover crops are ranked. So beyond goals, some other things that we want to think about when selecting a cover crop would be your current cash crop. Um, and this, this part of the tool just helps to serve as a reminder that you have a growing crop in the field. Um, so you can just put in uh, some planting and harvest dates, and then we'll show you the revised results is um, this cash crop growing period that overlays the seeding dates. Um, and again, that's just a reminder that there's a crop in the field. So say um, these warm season grasses are not going to fit within that time period because you're growing a cash crop. Um, so you would most likely wait till after the crop is out of the field to seed a cover crop. It is also um, an opportunity to think about some potential interseeding of a cover crop if you would like to try to get a little earlier establishment. Um, if you have a green bar that does um, come into that gray area, um, the other option would be to maybe aerial seed the cover crop near, um, near the end of the uh, cash crop growth. Or there's some work going on um, in a lot of areas um, looking at, particularly with corn at interseeding a cover crop, say at V3 or V5. So this also lets you see what cover crops might fit in some of those new, more innovative uh, windows um, that people are looking at. So just wanted to throw that out there. Um, the earlier you can get a cover crop established, um, the better it's going to do and uh, the more growth you'll probably get out of it. Thanks, Dean. Um, the next thing we want to look for um, is your drainage. Um, your soil type for whatever field you're looking at doing cover crops in. Um, so we've got um, the standard cover crop drainage classes here. And you'll see if we put in a very poorly drained soil, um, then we have the tile option come up. So if, if you have a very poorly drained soil, let's say you have no tile drainage, you'll see your results um, don't look good. We've got <laughs> cautions on every cover crop um, saying that um, it's not suitable for very poorly drained conditions. Um, and it also grays out those seeding periods as well. Um, so to correct for that, uh, most very poorly drained soils are going to have tile drainage. So you'll see when I select tile, um, I think most if not all of those cover crops come back onto the chart. Um, because you've, you've corrected that drainage issue. Um, again, the, the same thing works with flooding options. So if you have a, a difficult spot where you're experiencing a lot of flooding, um, there's not a lot of cover crops that are going to thrive in that situation, um, but there are some that are going to do better than others. So again, you'll see um, you know, some of these crops are not suitable for brief periods of flooding. And so that's noted with this caution next to the cover crop name. And I'd point out on the, uh, on the drainage um, information that that drainage class is available um, from the soil survey. So if you want to look up what the drainage class is for a particular field that you might have, you can go to the soil survey and um, it will be listed there. Um, now the soil survey doesn't know whether you have tile drainage or not, so that's why you need to add that in if you do have tile drainage. Um, but um, that's the easiest spot to get that to get that information. Yeah. So you'll see based on your selection criteria, which can be um, as extensive or as limited as you'd like, you can just put in your state and county 
and look at cover crops, or you can put in all of these goals, uh, cash crop and drainage options. Um, then you, it really helps to narrow down your choices for a cover crop. Um, you'll see here, um, it looks like winter cereal rye is the best option based on our, um, based on our selection criteria, and we have time to seed that after our corn is harvested. Um, so if that's something that you might be interested in, you can select uh, that cover crop. Just all of the cover crop names are linked to an individual information sheet for each species. Um, it will go ahead and populate you know, your county, uh, your seeding and harvest date for cash crop, soil drainage, um, and then what your goals are. Uh, from there, you can look at planting information. So we've got drilled seeding depth, uh, drilled broadcast and aerial seeding rates, um, whether it's you know, able to be frost seeded, We've got termination um, information and comments, um, performance and roles, so some additional ratings for um, goals and um, other useful information you might, might be interested in. Uh, cultural traits, you know, minimum germination temperature, heat tolerance, things like that. Potential advantages, some of the things that you might be interested in um, when you're thinking about cover crops and then disadvantages. Um, and all of our cover crop experts have taken a lot of time uh, to go through these comments on each section. Um, so these are, these are the things that our experts are saying, you know, if you use this cover crop, we'd like you to know these things about it. Um, so there's a, really a lot of useful information here on these information sheets. And if you'd like to learn more, um, we have a link to uh, the Managing Cover Crops Profitably chapter that would be applicable to that cover crop, and then some additional resources um, from our partners and um, extension publications and that type of thing. So uh, we hope you uh, will have a chance to uh, look, at the, look at this tool and um, also look at all the other resources we have available um, on the Midwest Cover Crop Council website. There are state pages there, so you can go to your specific state and find state-specific information, as well as, as more general across-the-board information about different species of cover crops and, and uh, how they work uh, across the whole region. Um, we think that an informed farmer that has a lot of information um, at, his, at his fingertips um, can help make better decisions, best way to use cover crops in their, in their system, and how to uh, uh, maximize the potential benefits that you get from them. So we hope you enjoyed this. Do you have any closing comments, Anna? No, thanks for joining us, and um, make sure to follow us on social media and check out our website. Uh, stay connected with um, all the new information that we have for you. Thanks, everyone.